Hello, and welcome to episode 12 of Sarastro's Star Wars painting series. In this episode, we're going to paint IG-88 from Fantasy Flight's Star Wars Imperial Assault. Without any clothing or many fiddly accessories to highlight, IG-88 should be quite easy to paint. You could just give him a basic dry brush and wash metallic treatment, like you may have done for your probe droids. For unique characters like this, however, I like to enjoy the fact there's only one of them to paint, allowing me to give them a little more time and attention to help them stand out. Here are the steps. We'll prepare and prime the miniature with a black primer. We'll then provide a dark metallic base colour using a heavy dry brush. We'll follow this with several alternate layers of light silver dry brush and a grimy coloured dark wash. We'll also paint the weapon strap. We'll then apply some thinned red and blue glazes to introduce some additional colour and character to the droid. Finally, we'll paint the lenses of the droid and provide some additional weathering before rebasing the miniature. Let's begin. After priming any miniature, you may find there are one or two recesses that the primer didn't quite reach. There's nothing wrong with taking a brush to manually paint over these gaps with some black paint. We're now going to provide a base colour with some unthinned lead belcher. I'll be applying it with a heavy dry brush, so that we leave some of the deeper gaps and joins an untouched black. This makes IG-88 one of the quickest figures to provide a base colour with. We're now going to apply a series of alternate layers of silver dry brush and dark wash, not unlike the method we explored to paint Garkin's armour in episode 11. We'll begin with a light dry brush using a bright silver, and for this I'm using some Necron compound. For the wash, you could actually use or mix any dark tone of your choosing, even just plain non-oil if you wish. For my IG-88, I've created a more characterful grimy shade, using two parts non-oil, mixed with one part Agrax Earthshade, and some Cassandora Yellow. This gives us a grungy oily tone, and will help give our droid a more unique look on the tabletop. As usual, we cover the entire miniature, encouraging the wash to collect in the recesses, without letting it pull too much anywhere we don't want it to. Once that's thoroughly dry, we apply another silver dry brush. which again will be followed with a repeat of our dark wash. We can repeat this process three or four times. Whilst adding the layers of silver dry brush, we can begin reducing the area we cover, gradually focusing more on the areas of the figure we want to turn out brightest, such as the head and tops of the shoulders. In this way, we end up not just highlighting all of the local details, but we also provide some more global highlighting of the form. Each single repetition of this process may not seem to make much of a difference, but the gradual accumulation of wash with fresh highlights added in between will soon give us a beautifully high contrast metallic finish. I found that four repetitions was sufficient to achieve this, but you should feel free to add as many repetitions as you like to achieve a look you're happy with. For the head and shoulders, I might even brush on a little runefang steel, to ensure we get a nice bright solid finish. For the last application of wash, we might want to be a little more selective with our shading. 
focusing just on the shadowed areas and avoiding the areas we want to remain brightest. Here's how my IG88 looked by the end of this process. One final touch I've chosen to add before moving on is to apply some thinned Agrax Earthshade using an equal quantity of Lamian Medium to the leg area. This is to provide some additional tonal variation and a subtle suggestion of weathering, as it's the feet and legs we might expect to pick up the most dirt. We can add some additional dust effects to this area in the finishing touches stage. Now I'm going to darken the gun down with a couple of layers of pure non oil to help differentiate it from the droid. But I would still give it a light silver dry brush to give it a bit of shine. There's just one final thing to paint before moving on, that's the weapon strap and shoulder padding. For this, I'm providing a base colour with Steel Legion Drab. Followed with a layer or two of a 2 to 1 Agrax Earthshade Non Oil Wash. A final gentle highlight with some thinned Steel Legion Drab can be applied to finish the leather off. Once that's dry, we're ready to do some glazing. I've once again drawn inspiration from the amazing character art that comes with this miniature, by choosing to apply some thinned red and blue glazes to introduce some additional colour to the droid, which we can assume to be coming from some imaginary light source. Because we want to be quite subtle, it's best to thin the glazes down with some medium. For the red glaze, I'm thinning some blood letter, which is quite a strong colour, with three or four parts Lamian medium. This should allow us to apply the glaze in thin layers, and minimise the risk of overdoing it. We simply need to imagine a red light source coming from one side of the miniature, and apply a thin layer of glaze to all of the surfaces and edges we imagine the light would hit. Once the glaze is loaded onto the brush, it's a good idea to wipe some off on some paper, so that we don't end up flooding the area like a wash. Once we've gently built up a couple of layers, we can do the same with some Gwillem and Blue. This time we'll hit the opposite side of the droid. Thin layers of glaze like this don't take long to dry so we can more or less work continuously round the miniature, building up the strength of tone to our liking. Ideally, we want to be able to view the droid from one side and see nothing but blue light, and from the other side, nothing but red. Adding layers of glaze like this might take some of the sparkle off the silver highlights we created earlier, 
so I'm going to add a few small highlights to some of the edges to bring back a little of that lost contrast. We should now have a pleasingly grungy looking metallic finish with plenty of character and interest, which means we're ready to add some finishing touches. We're now going to paint the lenses of the droid. Those that are flush with the head need to be a bright red, so I'm going to use some Evil Suns Scarlet. A couple of small dabs for each lens should give us a pretty strong tone. To make them pop a little more, I'm going to provide a very small highlight with a touch of Wild Rider Red. Finally, I might add a small amount of Karaberg Crimson, which is a dark red wash, just to the base of the larger central lens. This completes the red lenses, but there are also some dark coloured lenses at the ends of the protrusions, which I'm simply going to paint black and hit with some gloss varnish later on. With that done, I'm now going to provide a little optional weathering to the feet and legs. To do that, I'm going to stipple on some thinned Steel Legion drab to give a light, dusty matte finish, which should subtly contrast with the upper parts of the droid. I'm going to enhance the effect by applying a light dry brush with some Terminatus stone. Finally, I might bring back a little depth by applying some Agrax Earthshade just into the recesses. With that done, we can now give the figure a protected matte spray. I'm rebasing my IG-88 following the steps outlined in the previous episodes. If you do the same, you might like to apply some subtle red and blue glazes to the base to match the tonal palette of the droid. Finally, we can finish the droid off with a touch of gloss varnish for the lenses. And this completes our IG-88. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing to the channel. With so many exciting figures scheduled for release, I'm going to be working extra hard in the coming months to try to keep up. As is evidenced by this video, I won't always be sticking to the release order, which means I can cover new miniatures as they come out, alongside covering the remaining base set miniatures. As always, I offer my special thanks to all of my Patreon supporters for helping to fund the equipment now used to produce the series. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Star Wars Imperial Assault. Happy painting!